you don't work here, don't even think about coming on this show ever in a hundred years. Plus, we're talking about some big gamer wins and losses in a in a huge say goodbye to cats bowl of dude soup. No, I don't want to take it in because I thought I did it perfect. Hey, James, I don't think you need to take that again. Thanks. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Lindsay, again. she was looking at me like, oh, he takes it again. Mm. It was emphatic. I just want to be cool and comfortable. <laughs> People need to know that we only do this in one take, always. One take, just like Ever. 1917. That's how it was made. <laughs> I read a funny tweet that was like, Benedict Cumberbatch was waiting in that last room for like <laughs> months <laughs> until they got it right. I will um, sit here and plan. Spoiler, that big name actor is in that big movie. Sure. Um, hey, everybody. Welcome to Dude Soup. Uh, it's our podcast where we talk about basically anything we want to. Uh, generally pertains to stuff happening around that week. And this is the week of January 28th, 2020. Not to be confused with January 28th, other years the first month is almost over it's the almost over it's yeah almost we got over. over the hump guys is it's it, all is down the in. first month the hump yeah yeah like the like 13th February. or something is like the okay. worst year it was the worst day of the year oh gotcha because you got no christmas presents to look forward to <laughs> or hanukkah presents or yeah. Kwanzaa presents i gotta like wait a whole the other third year. thursday or something like that well i'm glad you guys made it i'm glad you guys could join me adam mm-hmm. kovic hey elise willems thanks for having me james Lindsay washburn hi this, am I saying that correctly? That's how you say it. Okay, great. Just and you say it. That's so, just how you say it. Yeah. <laughs> what are we talking about today? Well, we'll get there. But before we get there, I just want to shout out a couple things. Number one, we work for a little company called Rooster Teeth. Rooster Teeth has a pretty big convention down in Austin, Texas in July. And there are early bird tickets on sale for that convention right now. This is your last chance to get early bird tickets. They're going to be going until I think <laughs> February 2nd. Um, so please come, come see us down there. Uh, Lindsay, what was that thing you were promising to everyone who buys an early bird ticket that you were going to do? Uh, you can look at them through the window. There you go. So lots of perks. Why they're not called early rooster tickets. I'll never know. This company doesn't lean into its own branding enough. No, Mm -hmm. no. They They often forget that you would say that the person looked back at you with a blank stare. I don't get it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Also in terms, in terms of early teeth tickets. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. That's what they lean into. (laughs) We love it. (laughs) Um, Also the, uh, I just want to shout out retro replay. Uh, and a lot of people involved with that uh, had a charity live stream this past weekend. Mm-hmm. Lindsay was there. Omar, uh, Omar the was there. Day. Seth Green. Seth Green. A lot of people were there contributing to try and raise money. Uh, the boss. money goes to WWF Australia um, to raise money for those wildfires and and rebuilding those habitats. Um, while the live stream has concluded, their their Tiltify account is still available. You can still donate, I think, for the next couple of days. So if you want to donate to a good cause, uh, those guys busted their butts to make sure everything came together. Um, and I basically got to meet the entire cast of Spartacus. Pretty cool for me. Well, <laughs> so it was a win-win. Um, no, Lucy. But yeah, you can you can check out. There's I don't really have a short link for this, but they have a Tiltify. If you search for retro replay on Tiltify, it's the pull your finger out charity live stream. Um, and then we also have some sponsors this week, Upspart, Upstart, Mint Mobile, and Squarespace. Hurry to upstart.com slash dude to find out how low your upstart rate is. Get your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash dude. And head to squarespace.com slash dude soup to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Elise, you were asking a question earlier. What was that question? Um, why don't they call them early bird teeth kits? Oh, no, you're asking what we're talking about today. <laughs> Oh, yeah. What are we talking about? All kinds of things. We're going to talk about all kinds of things. But the first thing I want to discuss is something that is heated and internal. (laughs) (laughs) Did my results come back? (laughs) Your results. Adam, you don't have AIDS. You are not the father. Wait, hold on. You're saying it's negative or positive? Yes. Mm. (laughs) You're negative for being positive with AIDS. Damn you, HMO. Um, No, uh, I just want to say it. We're not going to ever have another Dude Soup guest ever again. Goodbye, Thank Lindsay. God. <laughs> you see Woo! how I- <laughs> No, that means that I get to be here every oh. time because I'm going to be like, no, you don't got nobody. Guess I'll come over. Yeah. <laughs> you, get to run out of, you get to run out of things to talk about with us now. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, that's not true. I'm lying. We're probably going to have more guests. Oh, but means I'm we, never going to be here again. <laughs> we did have a couple podcasts in a row that featured <clears throat> guests, mm-hmm. uh, outsiders, strangers, if you will. Mm-hmm. Um, Though I would not consider Freddie an outsider. Well, here's the thing. There's an interesting dichotomy because I, I, just to address it, we had uh, Mark Plyer and Ethan um, from uh, Unis 
on them. Uh, the channel they're going to delete. Ch- the channel that, that's that they're bigger than on, we'll ever came, be. Came on. And, and there's some people us. that were like, oh, I don't like when you guys have guests on or whatever. Then we had Freddie, and then and I was thinking, well, Freddie's coming on next week. We mm-hmm. don't like guests. And then we had Freddie on, and people were like, I love this podcast. This was fun, but yeah. some people still had the immediate reaction of like, no more guests. Mm. So I just wanted to go around and kind of let us talk about our thoughts on having guests on this show, um, what, what we think brings to it and what hmm. we think takes away from the show. Is this a business decision we're going to make on a live? We're not yeah, making let's, a, No, let's do it. Yeah. Let's oh, de- yeah? Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Let's make the decision Our right word is gold. Right now. We'll decisions. We'll voice our different opinions mm-hmm. on it and then we will make the call. What if it's the same opinion? It's probably going to be because this is a big liberal echo chamber. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bubble. <laughs> um, I think but, the show uh, should only be guests. Mm-hmm. Like none of us. You shouldn't oh, be yeah. on it anymore. Yeah. We just... do the intro mm-hmm. and then the, by the time the intro is fading out, it's us like kind of like carrying mm-hmm. ourselves away from the mics. Yeah. It's, it's one of those things where it's a, it's a conundrum mm-hmm. because you can do the thing where you vet all your guests, you know, the, the glove and two fingers for everybody. Mm-hmm. You know them very – like Freddie's one where we know Freddie. We'll hang out with Freddie, see him at parties and stuff. We go to parties um, <laughs> outside of work. And so we've known him for years. Mm-hmm. But then there's the, the guest like a Maurice LaMarche, mm-hmm. who we obviously are fans. We don't know him. Mm-hmm. But we're thinking, oh, this person might be a, a great recurring guest. It's, it's building a relationship. Mm-hmm. And so it's, it's, a, it's a tough call sometimes to make where you, you kind of go blind on a guest. And, you, and you're like, okay, well, we like what this person does. We like their vibe. Let's try it out. Ron Funches came in and recorded with us recently. We had never met him before. Um, I just interacted with him on Twitter. But he ended up being, like, really, really cool and really great. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. I, I hope he comes back sometime. Uh, sometimes there's a difference between having someone on in a video that you can cut down and a podcast that is typically yeah. – we, we edit some parts, but mm-hmm. it's a very light edit. Obviously, it's an hour long of us just kind of shooting the shit. So, if, like, you can't have that rapport with someone for an hour. Like, Maurice is a perfect example – he, we were just like, and go. Oh, yeah. You wind mm-hmm. him up, and he's just yeah. the performer and Maurice. He, exactly. And like he's, yeah. he's bigger than any of us, and we all love him. And I was like, oh, I think our audience will like this. Maybe they did. Maybe they didn't. I don't know. But I, it was, I thought it was an entertaining podcast. Mm-hmm. And again, it gave us a break mm-hmm. a little bit. We're like, let's hear from this interesting fellow. So yeah. probably the most Joe Rogan thing we've ever done. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, you do think about some most, most other podcasts. If they're not um, topically exploratory, they generally have guests. Conan podcast like a lot of them yeah. are like talk show style where they, they get a bunch of guests lined up so that I, maybe we're bad interviewers or something <laughs> but I think it's more that we've just kind of trained the audience to assume that this podcast is only us talking about what's on our minds or our thoughts every single week again and again mm-hmm. how did you guys sort of field guests at couch up because you had a lot of guests I was lucky to be a guest yes. at times um I think, were you all a cast of Were you ever I was on the guest? I was never asked. James was asked twice. Was I? I, I was I there at least three times. Mm-hmm. No, I, I said asked twice. And then they were like, well, James is busy. And they're like, is there anyone else? And I said, no. Well, <laughs> we did cook for you, so you had that going. But then I judged you as Master Chief. And you were on the Photoshop show. Anyways, uh, guess. No podcast. Though. Most of the time it was just, I think, Brad or Alex or James being like, oh, we have a friend or we know this guy or we know that guy. Um, but a lot of the times it would just be us there, but you know, mm-hmm. I, I don't know. I feel like that's pretty normal. You guys have had guests and like, and not guests. And mm-hmm. I, I think <laughs> <laughs> I'm not we saying like, it's, it's like, guests. Oh, this is a guest themed podcast mm-hmm. or like, it's not. Um, but also it's like, I don't think every guest is going to be a hit. You well, know, here's a question. Is Lindsay a guest? No. no, she works here. She works here, works but she's here. only done two of these. Freddie's done she more. She forgot about one. Oh. Yes, does Freddie work here? <laughs> uh, Omar has only been on a handful of podcasts as well. Well, technically, it's Omar he's always. Guest. Yeah. Is he still in the booth? I'm yeah. still here. Um, oh, so he's on lots of them. <laughs> technically, he's on lots of them. Yeah. No, I, I just think it's an interesting thing um, for I do, me. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. I, was gonna, I do think we'll continue to cycle in more of our team, yes. too. Yeah. yeah, we want to. It is um, always hard to take someone away from what they're doing all day, yeah. you know, like uh, for the thing, I don't want to spoil it, thing John did today that he spent his weekend on mm-hmm. where it's like, and then to ask him, hey, can you step away from something and spend an additional hour doing something? And then like, I absolutely know how that is when you you break someone from their flow. Mm-hmm. Like when you're editing mm-hmm. and someone goes, oh my God. Hey, hey. and you're like, cool, I was yeah, doing yeah. something. What do you want? And they're like, yeah. you, you know, we have a meeting. You're like, okay. And you're just, it takes you probably two or three hours to get back into that flow. Uh-huh. So. Mm-hmm. 
like you don't want to interrupt that. Mm -hmm. And we don't have, it's not like we have a talent agent or someone that's also getting us guests. Mm -hmm. I think that there might be a perception with the audience that like we have a booker or something. Yeah, like somebody Twitter. was like, we assigned yeah. him this guest and now he's here. Mm -hmm. It's it's us reaching out to someone personally or, or trying to, you know, make that connection and say, hey, mm -hmm. can you, do, are you interested in coming by and recording mm -hmm. with us? And that's, that becomes a whole other level of like, you know, producing and time management. You so gotta figure why out. is it even worth it? Why would we, if it takes that extra effort, why is it well, even I, worth it? I can give you, it? I can give you one example. Yeah. Uh, so a friend of mine is, is still currently, I believe, uh, repping Felicia Day. Mm -hmm. That was an email I got from a friend or like a text. She said, hey, I'm repping Felicia Day. I'm also repping all these other people. Um, would you like her to come on the show and promote her book? I was like, yeah, let's give it a try. Because if it's sort of the idea too, where you, you say yes. If you say no, it kind of kills the whole thing. Mm -hmm. We went through this recently trying to get into early movie screenings mm. uh, just to kind of explain how the game is played. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was like the 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 ask was Star Wars. Like, yeah. can we go see Star Wars? So we said, sure. I, I messaged the person, got the contact, said, hey, I'd like to see Star Wars. He said, awesome. We'd love to get you in. Hey, are you interested in Frozen? I went, what? Like, <laughs> Jacob is. Yeah. Well, that was the thing. I, so <laughs> I was. He'd take a lot of his headphones. What? Well, we were all going out of town, and I was like, uh, who's available? And Dan's like, I'm out. I'm like, I'm gone. You guys are gone. And mm -hmm. it's like, Jacob was like, I'm free. We're like, okay. So you have to say yes to all these things, and then it gets you into something else. Mm -hmm. So. The idea too, where like you don't want to be someone who appears to be hard to work with, yeah. where you're like. And Felicia Day, we also heard great things about. Always seems like a pre pleasant person. I thought she would be kind of a, a good fit for our audience, only because I was like I was reading some of her book and her background, and she had a very similar trajectory as us with like Geek and Sundry and all this stuff. I was like, oh, we could talk about these things. Yeah. She definitely was more of like I want to promote promote my book right now, which maybe as a host I should have probably been like, hey, let's do a light touch. I agree. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, yeah, no, I, but I, she also has like the same interests as us. We've s been in the same circles as her. We've, I, I know that I've had at least one or two, con I don't know if she remembers, but I've had conversations with her. It's like, oh yeah, she's really easy to talk to and everything like that. She's a very interesting person. Um, I just, I think the, oh, I guess the question is we talk about how the effort that goes into it, but then it's like, well, then why? If, if sometimes the audience, if it's not going to necessarily reflect in views in a lot of cases, mm -hmm. um, and sometimes the audience doesn't like it. Why do we put in that effort? Um, um, I think it's it's refreshing to have a different perspective or just a different brain mm -hmm. uh, coming in here. And no you new know, brain. The, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, different, we all. We, I think across our staff, we all get caught up in making the same jokes. We, we bring in someone like Freddie is is a great example. I know we're always going to talk about Freddie because we love Freddie, but he's mm -hmm. a great example because he's just kind of on his own wavelength. And he, mm -hmm. it's, you know, he's bringing a whole different type of experience, perspective to stuff. Uh, my favorite guests are when it's a guest with a great personality and we're not necessarily talking about, you know, them or what they do, but we're taking a topic and we're talking about that topic. So like mm -hmm. the Zyborn clock mm -hmm. was you know, a really fun topic to talk about. We weren't talking about Freddy and Rocket Jump. We were mm -hmm. just talking about a fun internet thing and, you know, yeah. it was great. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, having, I I don't like arguing, but I do like discussion. Mm -hmm. I do like when someone, I, I can see eye to eye with someone and maybe we don't exactly agree on the same thing, but we can at least talk about it. And the three of us, like, we're usually in agreement on stuff and I think sometimes we'll take the devil's advo advocate side to be like, well, I'm just going to argue with you just so we can have an interesting talk. Otherwise, it's three people going, yes, that thing looks cool. Mm -hmm. Next. You know, like, yeah, that's yeah. not fun. No one <laughs> who cares about that. Like, I kind of, I sometimes I want a contrarian mm -hmm. around me just so I can go, okay, hold on. And then the audience can project themselves onto that contrarian and go, actually, I am on that person's side. And now you you have an interesting discussion. You have an interesting talk as, as opposed to I don't think it's people. that interesting. <laughs> Why? Why do you think that, Lindsay? <laughs> you son of a fight, bitch. Fight, fight. <laughs> I am open-minded. God damn it. Um, well, I, like, well, this is <laughs> podcast bitch. number 423,000 or something like that. It's okay. really, what, what? this is podcast oh, number. Oh, yeah, like, yeah. We've done so many of these. So many hours and, of our lives. And they've, it's changed in its form. Like, it used to be only video, you only can talk about video games. That's the only thing. While and playing a video game. One I thought you guys story. talked about soup. No, never. We've actually understand. never really gotten into it. It, it was like free coffee at one point. I don't know. There was a coffee thing, I but like. I love soup. That's what I thought you guys were asking me to talk about. Yeah. And so, but. The, the, James, what's yeah. your favorite soup? What's yeah. your favorite soup? Camel's Chunky. Okay. Chunky what? Is Chunky a flavor? I'm going to go cream of mushroom. Okay. Clam chowder. Oh, broccoli cheddar. 
Uh, you can't change your mind. Oh, you I'm gonna you, say well, uh, tonkatsu ramen. Take any of the soup. You soup. give me it's a bread bowl. Oh, that's ramen. You give me a bread bowl. You trade her against rough. soup. You can't pick a bowl that you can eat. <laughs> I'm gonna throw that out there. <laughs> Cheese melted into bread. I did not mean enough to that it overflows. Everything. No, it's okay. That's but that's what I kind of like getting into it. I do feel like that there's it refreshes things when you kind of get like in this instance. I think you are refreshing this conversation. If it was just the three of us talking about the same things that we think over and over again, but you making it about soup <laughs> stupidly. <laughs> Has turned this into you a funny moron. Oh, well, the three of us, it's just a soup skin. It's a dried up soup skin. Have yeah. You, you Lindsay's it. She shaves the, the, the layer off mm. the top of the soup skin. Uh, yeah. Did you ever, um, you ever read that short story, the stone soup one? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you'd love it. It's such. It's so great. I don't it, know. It, yeah. It shows that people are assholes. Oh, yes. Yeah. The best thing. Well, one ever. person in particular. No, 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 no. It's the stone soup. No, it was the town. Well, so one the, person has the stone, and well, everyone well, else is bringing vegetables. Well, because the guy comes down and goes, he goes, I can make some great soup for you. And they're like, oh, what is it? And he's like, it's called stone soup. Yeah. All I need is a, a stone. And he gets hot water and stone goes, actually, it's pretty good if you put some carrots. And they're like, I, I think we have some carrots. And they start, all of a sudden, they yeah. have this amazing soup. Because mm-hmm. yeah. they were hoarding this shit like a-holes. Well, no, I don't know that they were hoarding, no, no. though. Oh, they no, were hoarding. No, a community came together. No. <laughs> you, ever, you ever read that story about the Chinese brothers? It's yes. The one who cries like a baby and drowns the world? Yeah. Yeah, I love it. Well, no, one of them. There's a, you guys know the story about the Chinese yeah, brothers? We'll I get do. back to talking about guests. You know the story about the Chinese <laughs> no. brothers? They're a bunch of twin brothers, but they all have like weird Avenger superpowers. Like that they're, they're all twin brothers. <laughs> yeah, they're, yes, There's, they're both twins and four brothers. Four twins. And one of them sucks up, the, he can suck up the entire ocean and some little asshole kid <laughs> is like, I'm gonna go explore. And he's like, get back here, Carol. <laughs> so then eventually he has to spit it out and he kills the kid. And so then they're like, they're like, well, we're gonna murder him. Luckily, one of the brothers, is also skin. his twin, has an, his impenetrable skin, so they try and cut his <laughs> neck off, but they can't do it. Yeah, and so he survives that. And they're like, ah. Well, it was like an illustrated book, I remember. And there's like a guy scratching his head with a bent sword. Mm-hmm. He's like, dang it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> his head don't come off, boss. An- another one, they're like, let's just burn him. <laughs> And then one one of the brothers is like, I don't burn. And so the, anyway, they try and kill all the brothers. They can't. Um, wow. So, that reminds me of that riddle. Not to totally derail this it's more. A, it's man. How to make stone soup. One for- early morning in the middle of the night, two dead boys got up to fight. Back to back, they faced each other, drew their swords, and shot each other. A deaf policeman heard the noise and came and killed the two dead boys. If you do not believe this lie is true, ask the blind man he saw it too. Ice cube melted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was ice, ice cube knife. <laughs> I was like, did you just have a Ice, stroke? Icicle <laughs> fell on him. <laughs> it's always that. It's Evidence either, melt. <laughs> it's either man, Anyways, crawl like baby, crawl on four, me that walk with cane, or it's ice. <laughs> it's an ice knife. Um, uh, no, I think I think that sometimes having guests, I, my reasoning is, thank you guys for asking. Mm-hmm. My reasoning is generally because I feel like a guest kind of reinvigorates the conversation. Mm-hmm. I think that it means that we don't just have to talk about ourselves. Because while the audience sometimes is more interested in that kind of thing, we do it all day to each other. Mm-hmm. We come in in the morning and we go, how was your weekend? And we talk about it. Mm-hmm. So when it when a red light turns on, it's like, all right, now do that again. It feels disingenuous yeah. sometimes to just like. Shut up. <laughs> I'm sorry. I said it feels disingenuous sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, But yeah, so like. So when you have a guest, it feels like you, you are genuinely having that conversation with the guest for the first time because they're not just hanging around all day. They're mm-hmm. not just yeah. around. But what the audience is like, I don't care that you had this conversation with Adam. I want to hear it again. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, no. I mean, I think there's I, a balance. I get that too, the familiarity. Like, you you obviously subscribe to this channel because you like these people and you want to just see them talk. And when you see someone who is an outsider, you it feels uncomfortable. And if it's not a home run, mm-hmm. you're, it turns you off and then yeah. that can turn a and you know a a sort of a, a avid watcher or someone who just kind of watches here and there it could turn them into an apathetic viewer yeah. and then all of a sudden they're like well I'm not going to watch this because it might be another bummer of a podcast I'm not watching for junk butt freddy yeah junk butt freddy <laughs> sold out that's what they to say the man. Who's junk butt? Freddy. Freddy Wong. Oh. They go, I don't want to watch it for that yeah. junk butt. Does watch it a, for James. He's got a junky butt? What kind of... How? That's what the audience says. <laughs> you got to stop reading. I'm trunk say. butt. Trunk yeah. butt James. Oh, trunk butt. He's dunk butt. Uh-huh. I'm dunk butt? You're dunk butt. Okay. I'm chunk butt. I'm wide chunk. load. <laughs> oh, you just changed it all. <laughs> okay. Um, so what are we talking about? My no, skin doesn't on. burn. I still want to I still want to make another point. I think that like also it allows honestly, this is kind of a wish fulfillment thing. I think this podcast allows us to reach out to people we admire 
and yeah. find an excuse to introduce ourselves to that person mm -hmm. and get to know that person with the hopes of building. Because the first time I met Freddie wasn't when he just came in to do a podcast. The first time I met Freddie was through something else, built a mm -hmm. relationship with him, and then it became a thing. And now I have... Now when he's in here, it's like, oh, my friend's here. Yeah. But then um, sometimes there's like a wrestler you adore. Say, <laughs> Joey Ryan coming on was a wish fulfillment thing for mm -hmm. me. I wanted to meet him and talk to him and potentially build a rapport and maybe mm -hmm. he'd propose or something <laughs> yeah. like that. We could move away together yeah. to an island and wrestle on the beach. Yeah. But like, no, like it's it is genuinely, I don't know if that's selfish, but I think that we we're like, oh well you know, come in and then talk about this because it'd be less weird if I just invited you to watch Sucker Punch at my apartment in the evening or something like that. Mm -hmm. So I do think that there's something like that. I always like when people say, oh, this person should come on come mm -hmm. on the show. I think this person would be great for Dude Soup or for a podcast or whatever. There's someone that I've wanted to have come on our film podcast oh, forever. Yeah. He'd be great. Vince Mancini um, is a, a comedian, very hilarious uh Film writer, We've followed that I, his career for over a decade. Yeah, I've been following yeah. him for a while, and I was like, "Oh man, I like, I think reading his work, I think he'd be really good on mm -hmm. on the show." Um, well, the, I've been the, trying to do it, but the community wants us to get Henry Cavill on here. Oh yeah, I've been I did seeing see that, that, which is like, it sure. was it was funny how they were like, "No more get." I, I I'm not trying to generalize. The, the community is a lot of different people. It's not just mm -hmm. one entire thing. But when they go, they go, "No more guests." Get Henry Cavill. <laughs> no more guests. Get Henry Cavill. What a yeah. chant. I know, but it was like, I, I, so I'm with you there where it's like part of it is selfish and there's a wish for him. I was yeah. like, yes, I would love to sit across from or next to Henry Cavill and look like a meek little nothing man next mm -hmm. to this human god. He's training for like a really long race though, so he's probably going to lose some muscle mass. What the hell? Yeah. Well, before he does that, and he still has the Geralt body hopefully, mm -hmm. but either way, I'm just saying like, that could be a dream come true, but how disappointing would it be if he was like, didn't sleep great last night. Not really feeling it. And he's just kind of on his phone the whole time. He's like, yeah, yeah. Is this over? Okay, bye. And mm -hmm. leaves are like, Witcher and theaters now or whatever. He would never do that, Adam. first of all. He would never do that. Would, he might he do the American accent. accent and he would throw us all off. Or he'd do the English accent and go, which one is it? I don't know. He would never be that way. But, he'd be great. But yeah. <laughs> when I, think I assume he'd be great. When it, when it comes down to like somebody being on your show and behaving like that, that's like a reflection of their character. So Four like, hours. Well, it's like you are, I think, putting your good faith in them and being like, you know, we trust you to have a good time here and like mm -hmm. be courteous Dance, and respectful. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> but like, I mean, not that they need to be like, no, entertain yeah. my viewers, mm -hmm. right. but like, you know, you're trusting them to like at least have a good like correspondence with you. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I'd love to have Alf on the show because we're owned by Warner Brothers now. Okay. Who own Alf. Do they own they Alf? Got, yeah. I didn't know that. They got the puppet somewhere. Yeah, I idiot. know it. I know they do. I, can, the I would love to alive? see that puppet. Can, that puppet is probably, one of its eyes is hanging yeah. down. Its <laughs> hair's all matted. There's like spiders crawling yeah. in his mouth. There's like a, a piece of a ghoulie part yeah. of it. Like it's like, Alf's oh, got it. Alf is in a museum. I here, here, when's your birthday again? It's in May. Okay. I belong in a museum. Yeah. I can I can be Alf for your birthday. You couldn't be Alf if I you could tried. Do, I could do it. <laughs> hey, Elise. <laughs> You're going to make a digital Yo. birthday card where you put your mouth cut out in Alf's face and then you send me a birthday message. Is that what's going to happen? I'm going to Photoshop a cock where his oh, nose okay. goes. <laughs> is, speaking of cock, um, I think there's one last fact. Then we can move on and talk yeah, about cool ahead. stuff. One last factor is that sometimes having guests of certain caliber do legitimize what we do a little bit more. I know I know some audience members like when we're kind of more niche and they think of us as this niche thing. And I don't think that we'd ever try and do something that compromises our comedic integrity or creative integrity just for the sake of whatever, you know. Mm -hmm. But there are certain doors that do get open when they're like, oh, you've had you've had Felicia Day on your podcast. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Then we let's get, you know. Jennifer Lawrence, come on, or whatever. Like, you know, Mystique like herself. Mystique, well, she'll do the Drunk Butt Freddy, and people go, I'm not going to go do that. Yeah, well, they go, Drunk Butt Freddy. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to do it, but not anymore. And like, Miss Lawrence, no. <laughs> um, so I don't know. I just, it was something, a discussion I saw that I was like, oh, well, we could have our own level of discussion about it, too. I'll talk about it all day. I love yeah. talking about ourselves. It's masturbatory. It is masturbatory. Hey, I can only do it so much, though. <laughs> Do you okay, like my fleshy I'm, nose? I do, Alf. I have to admit it. Okay. Yeah. Well, if you're going to want that Alf, you're going to want to make sure you got a good interest rate. So let's hear this ad from Upstart.
Between hitting the gym, eating cleaner, or learning a new skill, there's a lot of ways we can better ourselves in the new year. But I can't think of one that's more important than starting the year off tackling high-interest credit card debt. Upstart.com is here to help. Upstart is the revolutionary lending platform that offers smarter rates to help you pay off high-interest credit card debt. They believe in you. Do you have an education? What kind of work experience do you have? Have you ever been a professional wrestler? All of this information can help Upstart provide you with a better, smarter interest rate. Because you're more than just a credit score. It's fast, simple, and easy to check your rate without affecting your credit score. Once the loan goes through, you'll get your funds the very next business day. Over 200,000 people have used Upstart to pay off credit cards or student loans. So see why Upstart is ranked number one in their category with over 300 businesses on Trustpilot and hurry to upstart.com slash dude to find out how low your interest rate is. Checking your rate only takes a few minutes. That's upstart.com slash dude. So thank you Upstart for your sponsorship and thank you for that super low interest rate which allows us to purchase as many cats as we want to eat. Because of Alf, that's a segue. I eat cats. Um, that's the voice that he does. I actually haven't heard Alf in like 20 years. I know what he sounds like. I you haven't heard Alf? Yeah, we watched well, it not too la- long ago. Last time I heard him was on, he has a cameo in a Simpsons episode. It's that X-Files one where they're like, Mr. Simpson, were these any of the aliens that abducted you? And he's like, no. Oh, wait, no, it's a different one. So Mr. Burns is the Who are alien. Who you talking? You're talking to yourself right now. I'm looking past you. <laughs> I'm trying to remember. But it's just, it's no just Alf and he's, with Alf you just goes, <laughs> yo. Anyway. I just it's a funny fell asleep for like four seconds. <laughs> I know. I, it wasn't uh, for you. Well, I uh, you want to fall asleep in the lap of luxury, Lindsay? Okay. It's another ad read? No. Oh. This is a story segue. Oh. News story segue. Huge news, guys. You have been to Vegas. You see all those themed hotels. I love Vegas. Yeah. A couple. A couple, <laughs> you know, all the cool hotels and mm-hmm. do you Star Wars has O'Shea's. its, has its uh, space hotel that's coming? It doesn't Vegas? exist. No, no. Well, it's going to it's going to yeah, be I a know. space hotel they, and it's going to be cool. Well, there's a new bad boy on the block in Vegas. I don't know. Maybe oh. in Smattered. Vegas, the Atari Hotel I is s- coming. Yeah, I saw this. Isn't it coming? Look to like, at this. That was so fast. Good job. Atari cool. branded hotels. Full oh. of esports and game rooms. For all the Atari what? esports. <gasps> look Does at it that. look like that? It might. It might, guys. <laughs> mm-hmm. It will have three cars in when front of it. When is it? Atari, the cockroach of the games industry, <laughs> mm-hmm. which you just can't kill. Oh. It says where they're coming. <clears throat> it they uh they reached a deal with a real estate developer. It's in oh. Phoenix. License, I can go there. I know people. To license their brand to eight hotels: okay. Austin, Chicago, Denver, Las Vegas, San, Fr- San Francisco, San Jose, and Seattle. Weird. Okay. And so you, can, it's going to be a sweet gamer hotel, hmm. and you can do <clears> all <throat> kinds of gamer <throat> stuff. The, you know, thinking about this, I'm like, oh well, you know, we're getting the Super <laughs> Mario World. Nintendo in Land Univ- or whatever. Yeah, Super Mario, Nintendo Land, mm-hmm. and uh, Universal coming to Japan this year, and then it's coming to Universal in Florida, Florida, like mm-hmm. in two or three years. Well, I mean, this one's going to be finished construction in mid twenty twenty. Sure. Did in that Phoenix? Phoenix, baby. Did that mini Atari ever come out when they were trying to do like the, the NES <laughs> re-release and stuff if like I that? If I said yes, would you think I was lying? I'd believe you. If I said no, would you think I was lying? I'd absolutely believe you. So there you go. James, the last time I went to Vegas, yeah. I noticed a lot of the newer hotels, the kind of, you know, hotels that are on the up and up, mm-hmm. they have like gamer lounges, they have VR. It's called a casino. Oh. <laughs> they, have, they have just like these, these tech areas mm-hmm. where you can go, you can sit and like game with your... Friends, like mm-hmm. honestly, it's not really that surprising. Not at all that it's coming. To, I'm, but, I'm being completely sincere when you think about how a lot of these these uh, destinations are trying to include this in their entertainment. Yeah, but is Atari the brand that's going to drag us? It's the into one that, that surprises mm-hmm. me that they're doing it. You know but, who had this before though? It was Sega at the Luxor. They had like the oh, yeah, Sega yeah. arcade, and, it and was in a- Japan mm-hmm. there was like Sega World and mm-hmm. stuff. Yeah. yeah, bring back Sega, guys. I mean Sega, w- Sega! Honest, but think about Atari. <laughs> <You'll get there>? <laughs> <laughs> what Atari has to offer to the modern gaming oh, man. landscape? I would say Sega has way more. Jaguar, uh, twenty six hundred. There's that one shot in Blade Runner, I think. Mm-hmm. Cool. I've counted three things. Well, they'll have. <laughs> Restaurants, bars, a bakery, a movie theater, and a gym. 
all things gamers need to cool. game. Is this this is catering to people who have ordered Ready Player One recently on their Amazon wish list or something? You know what this feels like? You, you know the Hooters Casino in Vegas? Mm-hmm. I do. I've been there once. And it's like, mm-hmm. like it's almost like you. Oh, you gotta you gotta update that. You know what? Computer. For <laughs> tomorrow. Uh, you, you you go to there and it's like it's, oh it's a Excalibur, beautiful mm-hmm. castle, MGM Grand. Wow, such luxury! Mm-hmm. And then there's Hooters, and it's yeah. almost like they like someone let out a big sigh, and then like, what's the theme? They're like hardwood floors. Yeah, <laughs> like that's it. <laughs> Hooters <laughs> Casino, and you can get wings anywhere. I yeah. don't know. Um, <laughs> so, so this is what this feels like. Yeah, I, I went to Hooters once because I was staying at the MGM for went to, to CES one year. It's like behind the MGM or something. Kind of, yeah. yeah. So um, Kale and I were staying. We had a room together. And we knew they didn't clean the room. One, because all the glasses had like, looked like earwax uh, on it. Oh, cool. And then on the floor, I was like, hey, what's that? Find a chip for Hooters oh. <laughs> on oh, the floor. Nice. I was like, that's how well the MGM cleans their rooms. Awesome. Uh, but it was like a $100 chip. Ooh, they just left it on the floor. Real? It was, yeah, we went to Hooters and cashed it in. And I was like, you know, I've never eaten here. Let's get some food. Let's never come back here again. Uh, yeah, well, because when the, the person comes and goes, hey, hun, you like your pickles? And I was like, no, don't. <laughs> like, you're just trying to save up for college. If I wanted a stripper, I'd yeah. go to a strip club. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Experiment Rhino's right there. There's a, van, there's a van that will pick me up, but it won't mm-hmm. drive me back. Yeah. <laughs> Well, do you guys think you'll be staying at the Atari Hotel? Yes. I mean, I know. If um, but it's do I think that we're all going and we're going to stay at the Atari Hotel? Yes. Oh, bachelorette yes. party. <laughs> we're definitely going to do a vlog. No either, one who works here. Yeah. Either a trip to uh, the Austin one when that opens or we'll go up to San Francisco for a road trip mm-hmm. to the Atari Hotel. Like well, if this one opens like this year that's in Phoenix. Well, I'm not that's going to Phoenix. Six no, no, I'd rather I, be dead. I, <laughs> What's wrong with Phoenix? I, I saw someone vlogging in real time over the break. Um, I went and got my sister a gift. I went to a Samsung store mm-hmm. that we found like in uh, Glendale or whatever. And we're walking by and this guy's like, hey guys, so I'm here. And I'm like, who the fuck is that? <laughs> it's, just, no. it's just so weird to see it in yeah. real life of yeah. like someone talking to nobody. And you're like, oh, it's like, just, mm-hmm. Omar, I hate Scroll up in the article. The <laughs> Say what? I just want to see because, so it's basically the Atari has licensed out the name. Well, yeah, yeah. That's all they have. They're so, not actually going to be Yeah. Built. And so I feel, I feel like this isn't that ridiculous. Oh. We're kind of approaching it with a mocking tone. It doesn't no. feel that ridiculous what? to me. No, no. I mean, people license their names all the time for hotels. No, yeah. I yeah. just yes. think Atari is such a weird, it's like. A, it's a weird it's, choice. It's what would happen if a 70-year-old developer, a real estate developer said, I, we need to get into gaming. Gaming is the next thing. And they said, what can we license? I go, Atari. And he goes, I know that name. Right? I think, like, maybe nobody looks, else is down to maybe, license. Maybe, but also it's kind of like, it might be kind of like, a f- it's like a fun niche kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, everyone like, recognizes it. Refresh for the Atari brand. And it'll I be like, that, do you remember 40 years ago when Atari mm-hmm. started those hotels and overtook Sony and whatever else? That, you don't no. like guests with mm-hmm. different opinions. No, no. That's No, I agree. Stop I would think that's, that's Atari's <laughs> I'm not perspective. A guest. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, it makes sense for Atari. Well, Atari, way, Atari's, not not from, Atari, Atari's not a thing, by the way. Well, it is a is a it's an a, entity. It's an entity that someone bought and it has gone around yes. like a village bicycle. Like yeah, I know. everyone's been on it. Yeah. So I think it's probably owned by like a Saudi Arabian prince it's right now. It's just name recognition. Yeah. Actually, Omar, if you can look up the picture, can you just type in Atari Blade Runner? I think there is a shot. Yeah, yeah. Because there's like Pan Am and Blade Runner yeah, yeah. and Coke, and you're like, but that's what I'm saying. The 70 yeah. year old man is like, oh, from Blade Runner, and right. you're like, I don't know that that should be your I, barometer for what modern gaming. Is. I just I just like that it is. Yeah, that's so cool. Oh, it's 2049. I never yeah. Saw Blade Runner. It's okay. There it is. That's what it looks like. I've never like. seen any of them. Have you ever seen a neon light? You've seen Blade Runner. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> but like, I that's what I like. I've where you go, oh, set. we're we're sort of like you you see imagery now. There mm-hmm. was a sign recently that says like it, I think it was in China or something. But it says like wear a mask. Mm-hmm. But it's this giant neon sign because the pollution's so bad. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, just looking at Atari hats. Are you just shopping in there, Omar? The well, did you remember when this was the biggest thing Atari ever did? What are the like speakers? Atari speakers years? in the Oh, bill? what? Yeah, they put these out licensed Atari hats with just speakers Innovative. built into the brim. That's what it is. I don't know. Wow. I feel what like it, it's, a, you know, the goofy hats that have his teeth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I would rather have of. that, yes. Yeah. <laughs> you should put speakers in the teeth. I have a plaque that I made in high school in my ceramics class that's like, it's in the Atari logo. It's sitting mm. in my buffet in my apartment. I yeah. put it. Should have brought it. I'll show you guys tomorrow. Don't worry. Mm-hmm. That would be great in this office, this gaming centric office. I know. I'm gonna bring it and put. We'll we put it up. We need people to know we're gamers. That's what I like. That's why I stay at the Atari theme. Yeah, yeah. That's a, that's that's always my favorite is the lack of subtlety in the gaming community, where it's like 
Me M Gamer, I respawn because I game. And it's like, stop it. <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> this is so terrible. Is that a bib? <laughs> yeah, or someone gets like a like a PS4 logo tattoo. It's like, that's too much. Like, bring it back. Bring mm-hmm. it back just a little bit. Well, I was just curious. Like, again, I, I, I understand why Atari's doing it. I think the real yeah. estate developer maybe just said, maybe just took the one only one that responded to their phone calls. <laughs> but I, is there a better idea mm-hmm. for how gaming can break into this other world mm-hmm. than Atari? Dreamcast themed hotel. Okay, all right. I, mean, I like I said earlier, we're already seeing it in like Vegas, where mm-hmm. there are all those gaming lounges and stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know that anybody really uses them. I like for me, I don't go to Vegas and then go like, yeah, I'm like, a game. I'm gonna go game. play Fortnite. Yeah. Uh, so like, if there was like a Facebook or Oculus hotel, and when you get in, it's just a white room. Well, and they the thing is, like a Fortnite lounge me, in the MGM. Yeah. I want to die. To me, it's and like I don't look down on anyone that's that is enjoying playing games with their friends at any of these locations. But to me, the coolest aspect of that is, well, take some of this technology and incorporate it into your hotel stay experience, mm-hmm. right? So like. When we went, to, when we stayed at that hotel, the robot hotel, mm-hmm. and it has like the robot that Wait, sorts the, the luggage. The, the Yotel the Hotel. The Yotel, yeah. Which, which <laughs> is not the greatest, but well, the uh, perfect, the perfect side by side is the robot that's broken downstairs yeah. that doesn't work, and then the sheet that you used to hide yourself from the toilet in the bedroom. <laughs> So you're like, honey, I'm going to take a shit in this futuristic <laughs> hotel. Don't look. That was the worst. <laughs> someone, someone, someone looked at. We stayed at this hotel. I think this was for Let's Play Live New York. Yes. We stayed at the Yotel, mm-hmm. which is a cool theme. Like it it's fashions for, you, itself a boutique hotel. It's a boutique yeah. hotel. I think it's a little bit cheaper than if you're staying at another hotel. Yeah. But Ooh. the big thing is, it's like a robot will take your luggage. You will not for see you. a human. You will not mm-hmm. see a human being. When we got there, the robot was broken, and a human was <laughs> like, "We'll take that for you." Um, Similar thing happened and, in past. Oh, sorry, finish. And then, and then the other thing was they were like the bed is electric, so it can go up into a thing. But that's only because the room is so small that there's mm-hmm. no couch, mm-hmm. so it goes up into mm-hmm. a couch. And then once you lay it down into a bed, you can, you can no longer cross the room <laughs> yeah. because it's in, in the gap. Bed. And then, and then the bathroom is separated. Oh, there's the hotel music. Uh, and then the bathroom is separated by a curtain that you can see through it's all glass <laughs> yeah, it was, yeah but it, it like doesn't yeah. even close all door, the... for, door for the toilet mm-hmm. so someone was like someone was like oh but if we do this we'll save five dollars per room mm-hmm. and it goes yeah but if anyone comes with anyone else they're gonna be able to hear them take a shit and they're mm-hmm. like but but we'll save five dollars per room and they're like all right well they said sign it call it boutique <laughs> yeah that's fine was, Call it poutine. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, Basically. Actually, other than the bartending mixing robot in Vegas that I think is somewhere like the Planet Hollywood or something, every robot that is supposed to be a servant of some sort is always broken. So Yotel mm-hmm. is broken. There's a, a place in Pasadena that has Flippy, the fl- the burger flipping robot, oh. and he has his, his own station. Mm-hmm. Like, Flippy's broken today. And I was like, when's Flippy coming back? He's like, yeah. oh, I was broken for like four months. Yeah. <laughs> this fucking robot. That's so sad. Um <sighs> I mean, it's just where we're at right now in the state of uh, free labor. <laughs> I, I, I think I think that putting the technology of video games back into it, I will say this. When I went to Vegas when I was very young, like I was like 13 or something, we went on a family trip to a bunch of places. One was Vegas. I, All my brother and I did was find the arcade mm-hmm. and then sit there and then play games in the arcade while my parents went out and gambled. And then they would come and they would find us at the arcade. So every single thing was like, oh, wow, look at this new cool casino oh you walk through it where's the arcade there right. it is and they would always have some sort of integration because they have to do something for the people that aren't old enough to gamble it's well, family they, but they would have a game that you would otherwise almost never see at another arcade like do you ever play the boxing like game Instinct. oh no no i was saying the, the boxing game where you like actually have like yeah yeah it didn't have gloves it that one came later but yeah, yeah. It was just like two joysticks vr was the oh. first time i ever saw i first time i saw oh. VR was in Vegas and mm-hmm. it was a boxing game and it was like in the middle of the lobby basically and you would mm-hmm. go up and then it would be you on one side and then in this case my brother on another side yeah. and you're boxing with each other. I, I think it just shows the folly of God by destroying Sodom and Gomorrah where it's like look if we were allowed to just live in sin all the time we would get things like VR boxing. Yeah. <laughs> you're right. <laughs> and lobster um, whenever I want it. I, I was going to pitch you guys you can tell me what you think but what about a two week long Fortnite cruise? We call it the Fortnite Fortnite cruise. Cool. I love cruising so sign me up. But imagine <laughs> you paint the boat like you would a Fortnite thing and then you can have mm-hmm. Hang Each gliding. room comes with like a cyanide capsule, right? You have like hang gliding off the back of it or uh-huh. whatever. What about like a rope? 
and stuff. And like a stool and it, that I can just kick out. And then a show. The show oh. would be Fortnite characters okay. doing all the different dances. Can and I stuff. jump off the boat? Yeah. I think it'd Honestly, be really good. If there was like a kids' camp that was modeled after Fortnite, mm -hmm. where like oh yeah, you you're in the woods, airlift to this island, and then you you know mm -hmm. do all this stuff and do all these activities that are mm -hmm. like that'd be actually a pretty cool experience. Yeah. You have a dance yeah. contest. Um, I think I've never been on on a Disney cruise. But if Nintendo didn't did a Nintendo cruise, Nintendo. well, the only problem is I don't want to go on any cruise that encourages families. Oh, oh yeah. of course, yeah. that's like, honestly why I don't think I would ever go on a Disney cruise because yeah. I do love going on cruises. But I, mm -hmm. I'm like, I need it. The envy you'll feel when I, you see the, these happy people just the enjoying themselves. The annoyance that I'll feel when like they won't shut the fuck up. <laughs> maybe so. Maybe that's what Atari's hotel will be. Atari's hotel will be the uh, child themed resort experience that mm -hmm. no child has any interest in mm -hmm. whatsoever. So Look, it's just going adults going to this thing and yeah. being like, oh, VR boxing. It actually might be tailored more to people like us who are perpetual children, who are in their 30s, have no children, and don't, even know if it's don't want to grow up. We're, we're the Neverland kids, I yo. I think it's going to be, it's going to model itself sleek and sophisticated more than we think it's going renders, to. Right? <laughs> I that was sleek. A Red Bull in every room. I did. I Monster did. energy drink. I don't know if it's going to be as juvenile as we think it will. I, well, I, I wonder if it's, I wonder if it's going to be like the, begin. I wonder if it's going to be like the Nickelodeon hotel with like a PS2 in every room. It's 2005. <laughs> also the controller's broken and it's yeah. attached to the wall. Yeah. <laughs> it's got a VGA cable. You're like, what? It's, why are there CRTs in here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, either way, while you're traveling to all these locations, make sure that you're not spending more than you have to on your cell phone plan with Mint Mobile. As we kick off the new year, it's time to pay our respects to some things that we won't be bringing into 2020. Things like Windows 7, MoviePass, and Tony Stark. And last but not least, our old wireless plans that charge insane monthly bills. Nobody's gonna miss that when they make the switch to Mint Mobile. Mint Mobile can cut your bill down to 15 bucks a month. Seriously, it's the easiest decision you'll make all year and you can get it out of the way in January. Why wouldn't you do that? You'll have access to great coverage, super fast sell speeds, and none of the burden on your wallet. Every plan comes with unlimited nationwide talk and text, plus crazy fast 4G LTE. But I don't wanna buy a new phone just to save money on my cell phone plan, you might ask. Use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and keep your same phone number along with all your existing contacts. If you're not 100% satisfied, Mint Mobile has you covered with their seven day money back guarantee. So kick off the year the right way, get your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month and get the plan shipped to your door for free. Go to mintmobile.com dude. That's mintmobile.com dude. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com dude. So thank you, Mint Mobile, for your sponsorship. Um, yeah, never spend more than you need to as you're traveling all around. Do you do you remember? I don't know if you were there. Someone, I won't say who, pitched the idea of doing like a funhouse or rooster teeth cruise. Yeah, like imagine. Yeah, you stuck on a boat. Yeah, and we went. We went. That sounds <laughs> yeah. great. Yeah, yeah. And you're, you're saying they'll know what room we're mm -hmm. in at all times, yeah. and we're. We're stuck in international like, is there waters. Any way we could do it where it's like near icebergs? <laughs> <laughs> Toilets broke. <laughs> this is me. Toilets broke. <laughs> At least this isn't even your room. Yeah. Are we doing the signing here <laughs> next <laughs> to the broken toilet? Um, I love cruising. <laughs> well, I, I'll say the Atari Hotel, no matter your opinion, is a win for gamers. But what's a loss Put for the us? Put the stamp on it. It's there was a, win. a big, big no. loss for gamers this week. Come on. It turns out. U.S. federal court has decided that if you're muted in a, in a video game, mm -hmm. say you're playing COD and you're calling someone a racial obscenity mm -hmm. and they mute you, that is not a violation of your civil rights. Sorry. Good. Sorry, gamers. Come Sorry. On. So I can't. I'm not being violated. My rights aren't being violated if I'm being a bigot, but nobody can hear it. Yes, They're not exactly. depriving you of your freedom of speech. You're probably sure. wondering why was this even discussed? Because there was someone out there who thought their civil rights were being violated, their freedom of speech. There was mm -hmm. last year, uh, a person got muted in RuneScape. A guy got muted in RuneScape. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I don't know if it was a guy, but I'm going to assume. A person. Um, and, uh, and then basically filed a lawsuit okay. against 
the company that owns RuneScape <laughs> saying that his his uh, freedom of speech was violated. And then it went to court mm -hmm. and it was immediately said no because that's a stupid thing and you have, you're stupid. Do you have a picture of him at, at his court uh, hearing where he's dressed as the Joker? <laughs> no, yeah. It's, he's, like, he's like, I lost, and it's him on the steps or whatever. The whole, that's just so ridiculous. Yeah. Because it's not like the game decided to mute him and he doesn't have a voice to anybody. It's somebody muted him, right? Mm. Yeah. So. Well, he was muted. So it appears he was muted, and then he appealed to have himself be unmuted. So I don't know, maybe it was a global mute. Oh. Which, to think about what you'd have to do to be globally muted by a game. Right. And so, but I, basically his right to talk, to be heard by others inside of a video game, okay. he thought was a violation of his civil rights, his freedom of speech, when right. it was in so, fact not even let, close. Let me ponder you this query, yeah. my friends. Is this a slippery slope? No. Does it start here? <laughs> nope. And then do we get a Black Mirror type future where we can just mute John Hamm whenever we want? No. And he just not. becomes a fuzzy red thing? Is that? Nope. Because uh, protection of free civil liberties is based off the John government. Mm-hmm. Okay. Companies can do whatever they want to. Another deep thought for you. Okay. I think I'm right. Okay. Gotcha. <laughs> deep <Fair>. thoughts. <laughs> Who, are, which side are you guys on? The side of gamers mm -hmm. or the side of the law? <laughs> <laughs> hashtag gamer sit down. Uh, I didn't. I don't. I don't endorse that hashtag. I don't at know all. what the, the only thing. Is. The only thing worse than an angry gamer is someone who's angry at an angry gamer. Yeah. Also, <laughs> someone who identifies as an angry gamer. Well, yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. Once um, again, if you're wearing a shirt that says "I game me gamer," so I game me gamer yeah. me baby. Uh, right. <laughs> How do you think this will affect the uh, sales of the Atari Hotel? <laughs> I think it's going to help. Them, oh yeah. Actually, uh, my position on it is that if the game that you purchase has terms and conditions to their to the community aspect mm -hmm. and you're not uh and you violate you're, those you're terms violating and those mm -hmm. maybe you get muted sometimes even if you don't violate them cuz <laughs> the you agree bottom you, line <laughs> you basically agree to be the equivalent of in uh greek mythology when you just see the souls of the underworld mm -hmm. as shadows <laughs> walking into the into the darkness that's essentially what everyone is when they click yes on the terms of first i i thought i was shadow banned this morning mm -hmm. from the funhouse subreddit oh yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, never mind never mind I no, 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 of course well, not. No, well, because I, when someone posted a thing, uh, it was a Thor Ragnarok, like, Photoshop, and I was on my phone, I, and I left a comment, and I was like, like, funny timing, just like, wink, you mm -hmm. know, because we had filmed something that I was like, okay, maybe this, you know, just give me a fun little hint or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and then I went to check on it, and be like, oh, it did go through, it never went through. Mm. Phones that it posted, and you go through, I was like, oh, interesting. So then I left another comment this morning where someone, I posted that picture of me in the empty warehouse yeah, area. Yeah. It's just, we just cleaned out a part of the, the building. People are yeah, like, yeah. are they moving? What's happening? He's like, no, no, no. I, There's a, chill. we share this office. When you hear banging or dropping or yeah. just general inconsiderate mm -hmm. noises, it's generally coming from this. Yeah. Alert. When when you hear a hammer just swinging indiscriminately mm -hmm. and just hitting whatever mm -hmm. at yeah. whatever time and just not caring because they're not going to be here next week. Mm -hmm that was that area that they just cleaned out and I was like oh interesting it's all clean here I'll just take a photo so I was like I'll just clear that up I posted it and then it did, like it didn't show up in the yeah. comment section I was yeah. like did I, did I get did I get banned I don't know how because I know people who are shadow banned don't know they're banned mm -hmm. um, it eventually posted but I think it's just something wrong with the app mm -hmm. or something like that what but, did the judge say but my fear he said he said <laughs> I don't have scary. a voice <laughs> yeah he said uh, you have no civil rights so here get out of my office and he said leave uh, red blur <laughs> whatever you are you bunch of squiggles uh -huh. leave leave so That's we agree that the that that the U.S. federal court is in the right on this I one. I think For that once. you choose to enter into social contracts, and if you don't uphold the standards of those social yeah. contracts, then that's on you. Yeah. One of my favorite pastimes is the inherent misunderstandings of our civil liberties. <laughs> oh. I'm, like, not, even, it's I'm like, not from this country. This it's is. like someone <laughs> goes out into the middle of the street and starts shouting stuff, and then mm -hmm. a bunch of people beat the crap out of that person. Mm -hmm. They're like, my, my rights. Oh, yeah. like, that's, not, well, that's not what's covered. You have the right to say whatever you want, and then people have a right to react, which may not the be the right thing to do. The government doesn't have a right to tell you that you can't mm -hmm. try and speak. I, I mean, I'm... I'm of the side of like I don't I don't think typically that if someone's saying something stupid that it should incite violence, but I am aware that it does. This yes. is not really, and I'm not surprised. Not really on topic. But did you see this morning when Joel retweeted that tweet where someone was like, 
Yeah. Why? It was like there are no good Rubens on yeah. social media. Yeah. Oof. <laughs> and Joel I was did. like, uh, "What about it?" This is funny because oh. Joel. I mean, he could get mad. That's mm-hmm. a situation where someone handles mm-hmm. something like you know mm-hmm. someone else would get. Well, upset. here's the thing: Joel he wasn't tagged it. in that, which can no. o- which I can only assume fans started means- tagging him. Oh, fans started tagging. Mm-hmm. I thought Joel was searching for his last name on Twitter. No, fans How's it? Ruben trending mm-hmm. today? Oh, no. <laughs> fans started tagging him, and then yeah. he chose. Uh-huh. But you know, handle it with grace and humility I, yeah. and humor. M- much, much like the Atari Hotel, I like the futuristic painting the the, or the the yeah, dream the that is being art. weaved. Yeah, that like we are in that the cycle, right? Where you like the person can go out and start shouting something, uh-huh. and they go, I, "My freedom of speech." But we are getting closer to that part where we can just go like mute. I don't want to hear you anymore, or I put in headphones or whatever. Mm-hmm. And someone goes, but my right. And you're like, you can keep talking. What I can you? choose not to listen. Mm-hmm. What do you do when Joe Rogan keeps trying to endorse you, though? I had to watch that Robert Downey Jr. podcast. It, it, it was really good. What? Robert, what? Robert when Downey? Joe Rogan interviewed Robert Downey Jr. recently. Oh. Ruggie, because- Dougie. <laughs> Ruggie, Dougie Jr. I always want to call him like. Ruggie, mm-hmm. Dougie, Jojo. Because <laughs> they talked about Tropic Thunder in. And how impactful it was, and how you can't do that anymore, and yada yada yada. It was great, but that that is Joe Rogan pushing his rights on me yeah. <laughs> via the YouTube algorithm. I don't subscribe Rob, to Joe Rogan, Rogi, Dougie, Jr. but because uh, much like Lindsay's phone, it's uh, always listening. If yeah. whatever's around Sorry, me, if, I didn't get that. Yeah, <laughs> like I wasn't talking to you. If I'm watching Joe Rogan, okay, and then I mute his video, okay. can I sue <laughs> okay. RuneScape? <laughs> for not letting me stay at the Atari Hotel. Are my civil liberties in, in, in violation? Only if you have no more guests on this podcast. I'll tell you yeah. I'll tell you this. If you get a good enough lawyer, you can settle out of court. I don't know who you're suing. <laughs> I gotta find someone. Yeah, it seems like there's a whole... This might be a class action lawsuit. Yeah. Only done by you. Yep. Okay. Class E lack action yeah. lawsuit, you're, I call yeah. it. <laughs> you somehow end up I wore with, a suit. You somehow end up only with $5. Yeah. Um, Okay. Well, you know, yeah, the hits it. always come in twos. So this isn't the only strike against gamers. Oh, no. We got one more that I just want no. to see your guys' reaction. Adam, you sent me this story. Redbox no longer carrying games. You're going to have to rent your $899 for one night to play God of War mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, somewhere oh, else, guys. Yeah. Physical games are going bye-bye. Physical games, just not worth the it. The smarter way to watch and play. Well, now it's just to watch. Mm-hmm. No more play. Unless you watch Bandersnatch. Do services like Gamefly still exist? Uh, I think so. But they even they mm-hmm. I mean, I loved Gamefly when I had it. Mm-hmm. When I was when I was only making a little bit of money and knew that I couldn't afford sixty dollar games all the time, Gamefly was amazing and so good. Mm-hmm. Um, but now you I have only, the Epic Game Store that just gives you the games. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, that was I guess before That's a that. But joke. Um, <laughs> but I uh even back then, when I stopped using Gamefly, they were switching to a more digital. They were like, "Oh well, you can just have access to these games. Mm-hmm. Here's Split Second. <laughs> Everything for some reason, everyone had Split Second, and they just wanted to give away just Split Second. But the it. rental service type thing still exists, but it's just digitally with a lot of things like oh, Game per- Pass and stuff Game like Pass, that. Oh, yeah. Origin Premiere and like all yeah. that stuff. Those are, but it's just digital. Yeah, I mean, the, the you reason own nothing. The reason why Redbox is great because yeah, not everyone's got sixty bucks to plop down on. Like mm-hmm. I like I don't know if God of War is going to be good. I want to try it out, and yeah. then uh, you mm-hmm. know you rent a game, and then you're like, I actually want to buy it. And then, or you go, I beat it in a weekend. I'm good to go. Mm-hmm. Um, I always thought they were going to do something with like um, thumb drives or something. Like you get a fast enough USB 3.0, pop it in there. It just pulls the game down or something. And then you have like, a, you have the game on a key basically. Mm-hmm. And that's how they would like sell that's, hardware. That's like, what I thought when Xbox One wasn't going to have a, mm-hmm. initially wasn't going to have a disk drive. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I when, was like, well, there might be some, you know, rural areas or whatever where people can't download and they yeah. might have to have like go to a GameStop. All, with the, all the internet's funneling into this one red yeah. box. <laughs> yeah. I remember that press conference when Microsoft was up there with a, an assault rifle shooting themselves in the foot. Yeah. I was working was and great. I was in the truck. Mm-hmm. I was. <laughs> I know. I believe you. The X truck. It's funny how far we've fallen. Well. <laughs> risen. Someone, I don't know where I am. Someone, I am someone posted ride. all the stats of like because uh, the PlayStation 4 I think just beat the PS2 as the best-selling console. Oh, wow. Something like that, some crazy thing. And I was like, oh, I wonder how, like Xbox 360 or something like 80 million. And you go further down and it's like Xbox One, 40 million. Mm-hmm. And you're like, yeah. crap. Yeah. Yeah. It's big. I know, but that Cube, we're going to own a Cube soon. 
We'll see. The X Cube. I think they're I think they're gonna come out X-Cube at E3. Cube gonna give it to you. <laughs> and they're gonna go, they're gonna go, ah, remember the thing we showed you of the cube? And they're gonna have it on stage. They're gonna, they're gonna pull the thing off, they're gonna mm-hmm. clap or mm-hmm. whatever, and they're gonna go. But we have one more surprise, and then it's gonna be a cardboard box with a thumb drive with a like a thing this big, and they go, okay. This is the Xbox One Series XX. XX. X-X. Okay. It's, I mean wow. the XS. Whatever it's, it's extra called. Small. XS. Whatever. No. No. This is it. That's oh. it. That box was a distraction. We mm. were tricked. It uh, is a thumb drive. All the information is on the thumb drive. Mm-hmm. And then you just pop it into whatever you right. want to. You pop it in the back of your TV. Mm-hmm. Boom. You got Xbox. Pop can it in you, your. I take it on a cruise with me. Yeah. You bet you can. How long's your cruise? Five days. When are we going Two on weeks. this cruise? Guys? When they start the <laughs> Fortnite cruise. <laughs> Omar, how much would it cost for us to rent out an entire cruise ship and shoot one vlog on it? I think it's a shooter. <laughs> totally ourselves. doable. Totally doable. Totally doable. Look for looking out for it. Yeah, I mean, if you want to do a carnival cruise, that's how, that's how I did my bachelor party. Mm-hmm. I know because I wasn't you invited. Can I go didn't know cruises you. Round Still trip wasn't invited. From, <laughs> like true. Long Beach to Escondido or wherever, and it's like four hundred bucks. That was and it's a bus. All your food. <laughs> that a was a bus land. On the water? That was a land cruise you were yeah, on. Yeah. It was a Pokemon Go tour that you 400 did. 400 bucks Omar. you can go down to Mexico and back. How much days. how much would they it drive. cost for us to just get like an old school bus and drive it around <laughs> make a vlog? Too much money. Too much? Oh, we got to do the boat. But the cruise is doable. We got to do, do the boat. Do they let you off in Mexico? You get off there? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You run wild and free. They sure do. Do you they climb up the pyramids? Off, but you might not get back on. <laughs> oh, you know, they don't let you climb on the pyramids? You don't go to that I part hide. of Mexico. Uh, they should. You go to Ensenadas or whatever. Need, oh, yes. That's what I meant to say. I you know. need something that's like <laughs> the equivalent of an icebreaker. What do you mean? Like, you know how they had those old boats that just cracked through the ice in the Arctic? Oh, yeah. We need that for land. So okay. that way I can take cruises to like gotcha. to Ohio. Ohio. Right, right. <laughs> we, guys, we both want to go to the to the jewel of America, as I they call it. Going home. Yeah. Ohio. I, Ohio. I like I like that idea. While well, you you're you're busting through <laughs> South America and you go, fuck you, Panama Canal. Yeah, yeah. You don't need it. Yeah. We we're busting land. Meanwhile, we're no. recreating Pangea in some weird way. Someone we're someone should make land. that for me. No. And when they do, they should get a website mm-hmm. and a domain. So that way I can find out more about it. And the best way that they should do that is a Squarespace. This episode of Dude Soup is brought to you by Squarespace. If you want to build your brand, share your creativity, or have a home online, there's no easier way to do that than with Squarespace. It's an all-in-one platform designed to help you build an attractive online presence and allow you the freedom to run your own business. Squarespace is optimized to handle any purpose, use templates to support web pages, art galleries, storefronts, and more. Manage your online experience by adding multiple contributors and setting your content to simul post across every major social platform, no plugins necessary. Everything you need to build the perfect website is right here on Squarespace. So go to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash dude soup to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. So thank you Squarespace for your sponsorship. We are almost done with this podcast. We have covered everything from ourselves to some other stuff. So I feel like we didn't get a single conclusion out of anything we talked about. We were supposed to decide whether we were going to have guests or not. Yeah. We do do it at the end of the show right now. In the Rockatari Hotel, Landbreakers. So right now we have one more thing. We have one more thing to show off for the end of the show. But before we do that, let's decide. Are we having guests again? We're going to have guests. Everyone cover your eyes. And then and, like, maybe, thumbs up, thumbs yeah. da- thumbs up for guests, thumbs down for no guests, mm. and then uh, and then we'll open our eyes at the same time. All right, ready? Okay. Are you ready? Mm-hmm. Open your eyes. <laughs> I'm, I'm like we got three <laughs> to one, and then I voted twice. For <laughs> you do the do the thing with the the Joaquin Phoenix like glider. Well, like well, like Freddy, other <laughs> like. That's Wait, are we only letting Freddie come? Only Freddie. <laughs> Freddie will be the only guest in 2020. Well, we've decided. I and then my... I get to pick two random guests. And you get to pick <laughs> okay. two random guests. I put guests. my thumb down as a goof. I definitely want more guests to come. It's mm. fun. I, like, I think, yeah, I think it's fun. You never know what you're well, going to get. Like just, Forrest Gump's yeah. mom said, mm-hmm. you never know what you're going to get. I guess it's on us. Can to you get vet, her? It's yeah, on us Sally to vet Field. them and make sure they're good for mm-hmm. the audience. Yeah. And yeah, maybe maybe if it doesn't go so great, we never air mm-hmm. the podcast. Oh, Zach Canner. Zach Anner. Our audience mm-hmm. loved Zach Anner. Yeah, mm-hmm. get him on here. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, on the podcast. You know, so what, not. You know what I hate? You know what I hate? Here's a pain. And I don't know if we talk about it enough. We talk about it here all the time. I hate this set. 
Oh yeah, I hate oh, it. Oh, this is pretty. It's really it's uncomfortable. uncomfortable. Uh-huh. It always hurts my back. And I feel like We're when I want to look at you guys, mm-hmm. I am just it's the back of my head. Omar, mm-hmm. can we afford the set and the cruise? No, just one. Just one. We got to pick one. What if what the if, set's on a cruise? What if the set's on a cruise? on a cruise? We just go on a cruise, film all the dude suits for the whole year. Anyway, we have one more segment. I get everything I want here. We have to go. <laughs> yeah, and so soon after hire. I just wanted to say uh, <laughs> that I checked the numbers, and Countdown to Cats was the most successful segment slash might as well be full-blown show on its own of dude soup. Since it began, what are you basing this on? The numbers. What numbers? so so the numbers are in, and they say it's the best. And so I just okay. want to say that while people have been telling me that at the box office it didn't do that great, mm-hmm. Countdown to Cats was my baby, and Countdown the, the to Cats was a, a a box office blowout. So you're saying Countdown to Cats was more successful than the film Cats? Yes. Well, also which version? I believe 1. it. 1.5? It went 2. through many 3. iterations, just like the film yeah. itself. Which ver- which patch are you watching? But it did leave, the it, it ending did leave a hole in my heart. Good. And so <laughs> I wanted to find something to fill that hole. What do you fill it with? We got a brand new segment. God damn it. Coming to you right now. Check it out. <laughs> this is what you were laughing at. <laughs> Mount. <laughs> you missed the end. You missed the end. What? It just cuts. It cuts to a frame of Michael Keaton. <laughs> oh boy. Hey guys, welcome to a new recurring segment. Every time I host a show, and we're going to be doing Mount Up for Morbius. <laughs> <laughs> when does this movie come out? <laughs> for several months. God damn it. <laughs> oh no. Mount up for Morbius, uh, kind of similar with Cats. It was so successful, and I think it's because people learned a lot. I took something that no one ever heard of before, <laughs> and I shared it with the world. Okay. And so now we're doing the same with Morbius. A lot of what Cats was was quizzes. We're not going to be doing that this week for Morbius. This is just kind of a getting to know you, okay? All right. So, mount up. What's up? Why did you choose Mount Up? That's the titling. Because you're mounting up. Like, what do you mount up? Like, Wait, hopping on a horse. Countdown to Morbius. Like, that mo- doesn't have any alliteration. Moist up for Morbius. I like That's the disgusting. alliteration. Okay. Alliteration. Mount up for Morbius was the best version of it. <laughs> it's the first word you thought of. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so, uh, we're just going to jump right in. Morbius, also known as the Living Vampire, is a vampire character from Marvel Comics. In case you didn't realize, mm-hmm. he uh, he was a member of the Avengers. Did you guys know that? I no. didn't. He was a member of the Avengers, uh, Shield. Um, he's a vampire. He's 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 affiliated with a lot of things. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't really have any trivia no. <laughs> about him. <laughs> well, there, you just gave me tons of trivia. But his I'm Wikipedia high. is open. Mm-hmm. Let me just search <laughs> things about Morbius. Are there? Any other actors out there who will have portrayed a DC and Marvel villain once? Um, I'm sorry, hero and then villain once. Why? Who's the actor? Jared Leto. Oh. Because they ain't letting him play Joker anymore after Mm -hmm. New Joker. Margot Robbie said good riddance. Yeah. All right. Here's screen rants. Things you may not know about Morbius. Number 10, he's a (laughs) supervillain. Number nine, his comic is violent. Uh, eight. He has a rare blood disorder. That's right. Morbius is from Greece, okay. and he has a rare blood disorder, which causes him to get weaker. He's getting weaker as he gets older. He's like Stephen Hawking. Okay, slow, but slow then, day at the screen ran off. But then he finds that he can that bats are a power, <laughs> so he gets bitten by a bunch of them. Cool. Bats and then it are gives him power. <laughs> it gives him the power of bats. Okay, fruit bats or. Vampire bats? Vampire bats. Okay. Vampire bats, duh. There's all sorts of bats. It turned him know. into a living vampire. He is a okay. doctor. Um, Who's a not living vampire? Why is he so bad? This this says he doesn't have magic powers, but then it shows him teleporting okay. into bats. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so they didn't read their own article. They didn't, know. Yeah. This is 
And Screen Rant, by the way, is the new BuzzFeed. Oh, okay. Where they, it's, oh. I think it's an AI program that just <laughs> writes things. Okay. It's a number five. He could encounter Tom Holland Spider-Man? Question mark. There's an Easter egg if you pay close attention to that first teaser. Oh, gotcha. With the Spider-Man in the background and Michael mm. Keaton's in it too. Except it's Tobey Maguire and it makes no sense. All right. He does have a love interest. He <sighs> had a fiance. Yeah. Is she also but in the But she, trailer? I guess, okay. wasn't crazy about him being a vampire, so they killed that. Okay. Uh, okay. He has a friend. <laughs> <laughs> um, How are you going to do this every time? <laughs> Oh, well, um, <laughs> he's gonna try to keep getting out of hosting the podcast. Yeah, he won't be able uh, to you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to get some. Morpheus, well, you're gonna have to get some blade trivia in there too, or the other. Maybe, yeah. Oh, he's got fights. All think about who else he's fought, like Spider Man <laughs> or a version of Morbius. First time Morbius. Uh, first time Morbius fought Spider Man. Spider Man six arm. How about that? I remember That's that from cool. the cartoon. Does yes. Morbius ever fight a version of himself? We all do every day. He's that's a, his greatest nemesis is his own self. Mm. Who's he gonna suck blood from today? Is mm-hmm. it gonna be you? Okay. I hope it's or me. Her. Okay. So could Tom, be anyone. So Tom Holland's in it or not? Uh, could be. Oh, did you know that the album <laughs> War by Thirty Seconds to Mars is written because of the problem they had with their record label? It's a war represents the war. Hey, everybody, that's our show. <laughs> That's our show, everybody. Look forward to more. We're gonna get make sure everyone is ready for Morbius. You did it all. No, there's so much. The ways goes much deeper. They're gonna make sure everyone's ready for Morbius by the time that movie comes out. Okay. Can't wait. Don't know why it cuts. There's one point in the. Can you roll it one more time to wrap? <laughs> What's up with the middle fade out to us? Yeah, it, it's, you know, <laughs> vampire. Okay. It's oh, supernatural. I, it. I, I know more about 30 it. Seconds of Mars than I do about Morbius now. Well, maybe that's all going to be covered. It was all, we're going to cover everything. Okay. From We're going to be prepared for everything. As soon as Morbius comes out, mm-hmm. we're going to be hitting the ground running. Cool. What if I don't end up going to see it? You won't have to by the time we've done eight of these. <laughs> you won't have to. You'll know all the beats in your head. I thought you were going to do like some Sonic countdown or something. No, Sonic comes out in a week or so. Mm-hmm. There's no there's no time. I've heard nothing but good things. If I did Sonic, it would be too quick. I got that because it goes fast. Hey, everybody. Thank you for watching this episode of Dude Soup. Um, we talked about a lot of things. Uh, I just wanted to shout out a quick reminder that early bird RTX tickets are on sale <laughs> till February 2nd. Basically got this weekend to get yourself some early bird tickets. You want to meet all of us down in RTX. Uh, I don't know if that includes the cruise. Omar, does that include the cruise? No. Does not include the mm-hmm. cruise. Extra. Yeah. It might be extra. We can simulate um, that by just more getting a small room you can just back us up into. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> um, also, <laughs> Dump us out like a truck. <laughs> <laughs> Coming up on the channel this weekend, we played Half-Life 2. We Played Half Life Two. We well, we we right. played Half Life Two all at the same time. Mm-hmm. Some of us for the first time. So one of us. Make sure to check that out. That's a fun video. And then also one last shout out to uh, Retro Replay and their mm-hmm. campaign to raise money for WWF Australia um, to rebuild those habitats, help fight against the wildfire. Um, there's still a little bit of time to donate there if you want to. Look them up on Tiltify. And uh, yeah. Thank you guys for joining me. Give those fires the people's elbow me. it deserves. Click the bell, hit the like. Smash that, <laughs> smash, slap the like, and smash the bell, and you'll never miss a mount up for Morbius again. That's a promise. Or be like most of the dude souping, souping audience and just passively watch it and passively give it a watch. thumbs up. Yeah. Like usually 2,000 people Put it go, on in I your like phone. This. Yeah. Tell it you don't want it to play the mm-hmm. video and yeah. then just pop in your pocket. I think most people just fade out into dream space. Kind of like the Listen fade out in the middle of the mount. Mount up for Morbius trailer that Omar's going to play right now. Have good dreams about Morbius. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, guys. The carnage is here. Because <laughs> I was there, and I also felt like a bit we, it's weird, but I felt like a bit of ownership because so many people who have come to it after the fact, who, you know, because Awful Forms was an interesting place because you had to pay $10 to get an account unless mm-hmm. you were like a really old account, which was one that I had. But then every time they banned you, you just lose the money. So people would pay money to get back into it, which caused this really weird 